Live from PA TV Studios, it's the Lyle Style Show. And now, the man with the most style, it's your host, Lyle Style. Welcome, welcome to uh, our special edition of the Lyle Style Show. Uh, we've been trying to, to get the show together. This is a very uh, important issue that we need to talk about. Uh, we're here with uh, Marty and Abby. Uh, they with uh, uh, Courage Ride. He does an uh, uh, organization that raises monies uh, every year for, for cancer, for a very unique type of cancer, and Abby's a survivor. So I want to welcome you to the, to the Lyle Style Show. Thanks a lot. Uh, glad hey, to be here. Mar yep, glad to be here. Thank All right, Mark. I mean, we've been talking, talking on the telephone and mm -hmm. everything, and this is unique. I never heard this type of cancer. So look, kind of tell me a little bit about what this cancer is, what type of cancer this is. Well, Abby would be a good one to talk okay, about really? that since yeah. the uh, sarcoma cancer is what you had. Is that right? Okay, yeah. so this where you've been a survivor yes. and everything. What? Yeah, and I currently continue to fight the fight against sarcoma. Um, I'm also a nurse, so I kind of know oh, the medical okay. side of things too a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... If you look at cancer, the big picture, there's really two main types, carcinomas and sarcomas, mm -hmm. of the solid tumor types, I should say. Most are carcinomas, but our type, my type, and what we ride this ride for is sarcoma. And they're very rare in adult patients. Um, of only about 1% of people with cancer have mm -hmm. a sarcoma. Oh, wow. So they're a little more common in children, like osteosarcomas mm -hmm. or Ewing sarcomas, those are in the bone. But my personal type of sarcoma was around my nerve in my hip. Mm -hmm. And it's called malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. <laughs> Try to say that three times. Right, yeah. kind of oh, a long wow. name. Um, like I said, very rare because it's a small subtype of a very small type mm -hmm. of cancer. and. So, not that that really means too much to me as a patient, but one of the big drawbacks to having such a rare type is following a certain protocol. Okay. I think the doctors don't often know what to do because there aren't the numbers of patients to know what's been successful or not in the past. So really, it's kind of like we're just blindly searching our way for, well, well, let's try this, let's try that. And um, there's not a great protocol laid out of what would work the best. Okay, now when did you get this particular cancer or? Well, my what? personal story, I was diagnosed at in the, in the late summer of 2009. So right about four years ago now, mm. or I'm sorry, 2008, so yeah, almost four years ago now. Um, and I had been sick for about a, not really sick, I should say, I had a limp and I had some pain in my leg. So I didn't feel sick mm -hmm. otherwise. But um, at that point we had done an MRI and found this tumor that was up in my hip area. Whoa. And it was large enough that um, it needed some treatment at that time. Now the, the one thing that's unique about sarcomas is that the the definitive, meaning the be all end all treatment, is surgery. You mm -hmm. have to cut them out in order for the patient to stay alive for very long. So at that point, my doctor talked to me about amputation of my leg. Wow. And that's <clears throat> what I thought too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and actually, my first reaction was well, no, no way, I'm yeah, not going to do that. Uh -huh. My life would be over. <laughs> I hear, yeah, that was, so So then, so you had to really think about that. I did. Or, yeah. I did. I had to think about it a lot. Um, and it is true that my life as I knew it, in a way, was over, but life is definitely not over Amen. since my amputation. So mm -hmm. there's still so much that I can do. Um, I could even ride a bike if Amen. I wanted. <laughs> See? There's adaptations, there's yeah. hand cycles that, right. that I could ride and mm -hmm. things like that. So Now you have family. Has your family been supportive of you this? or? Yeah. How? I have a very supportive family and friends and just everyone in this area. I've, I've been really blessed and pretty much every other way of my life than, than this one thing. Mm -hmm. Everything 
goes well for me. So, Amen. so this, will, this will does not define a person who you are, though. Exactly. Right no, that, exactly. This is just one one part of a lot of who I am. So. Amen. That's why. Wow. That's, that's a beautiful thing. That's see, that you survived. You've been surviving for, for four years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so your encouragement to, to other people that's going through this rare, rare, particular cancer. I can't pronounce the word, so I wish I had a shorter term for that for that cancer. But uh, sarcoma. Sarcoma. Okay. Yeah. yeah I can say sarcoma. sarcoma. Yeah. Yep. So so now how, now so Marty, how, how did you get involved with the Courage Ride or meet this young lady right here? Um, I got involved because. Uh, my wife, um, she passed away in 2007. She was diagnosed with a sarcoma, a leiomyosarcoma, oh, a in 2001. Mm -hmm. She had, um, she was 46, um, but she had uh, fibroids, and the doctor said she was too young for anything like that to be cancer, so mm -hmm. they didn't do anything about it, and finally, she had a hysterectomy and they found out that they were malignant and mm. so at that point some of it had spread to her lungs and her liver and so mm -hmm. uh, uh, for five years she was undergoing treatment and just like Abby um, there's 6,000 cases of sarcoma will come up in a year mm -hmm. and it's in the millions for like breast cancer oh. and so this is really really rare and there just aren't uh, doctors may go their whole career and see three sarcoma patients. Wow. And so for us, she couldn't find anyone who really understood her disease, and so she ended up having to go down to uh, Texas, to MD mm -hmm. Anderson, to a sarcoma center there. And we'd do scans and tests, and then we could do our treatment back here at the university. But uh, um, the sarcoma does not respond to chemo. Um, it kind of responds to... to uh, uh, radiation but mm -hmm. surgery is really where it's at. Hers wasn't in a place that you could really do surgery and lungs oh, and things like that yeah, it's hard yeah. to get everything. And so we did a lot of chemo and it slowed things down so the grow it, they didn't grow quite as bad. Mm -hmm. But at that time, while she was in the midst of her treatment, the courage ride started. Oh, okay. And the one thing is when you have a cancer like this that nobody knows about and you can't find research, you know, there are no big fundraisers that the Hollywood uh, uh, yeah, stars right. big names, yeah, Sarcoma. talks about it, right. This ride popped up, and it was, the, it was, she just lit up. It said, finally, something that I can do mm -hmm. for my disease that maybe make this a better thing for the next person to catch it. And so um, she rode the first two rides. Oh, she and, did? Uh, yeah. Oh, and wow. then uh, her cancer got too bad and she couldn't after that. And I've been riding ever since. And uh, this year decided mm -hmm. to go another step and just help. Help out. Because, okay, so, so how, did, how did this particular ride start, Courage Ride? Where did, where did the name come from and who started, started the, okay. the... And that's where I'm going to refer to my notes. Okay. <laughs> the ride was started by um, a couple people who uh, live... Uh, near Riverside, um, mm -hmm. near the Iowa Mennonite School, okay. uh, south of Iowa City. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom and Jackie Bailey started the ride in honor of their son, Seth. And Seth got a, and I'm gonna have to look at the word for his sarcoma here. It was- so, um, a different sarcoma. Huh? He got, and it was in, in the bone. And um, wow. it, uh, it, he got, it, it was discovered in 95 when he was a junior mm. at Iowa Mennonite High School. Mm -hmm. And, um, they ended up amputating his leg, and he actually played high school basketball his senior year. With really? Aesthetic. Now, what what occurs right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What occurs if he can do it? And you know, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. So he did that. Um, went through college. Um, he ended up at um, the. Um, U.S. Olympic Center in Colorado yeah, okay, right. as an intern. Mm -hmm. And while he was there, he was also training um, to be a, a Paralympic swimmer. Wonderful. And uh, the guy never quit. Mm -hmm. you know, everything about him was, you know, I can beat this, I can beat this, it isn't going to beat me. Mm -hmm. And um, then in 2002, um, the cancer kind of came back. They found more tumors, he went back for more chemo, and in 2003 he died. Oh, wow. And it was a couple years after that, that that his parents, Tom and Jackie, again, same thing, they were searching for, you know, nobody knows anything about mm -hmm. this disease. Yeah, it was a rare disease. Um, the Holden Cancer Center at the University of Iowa Hospitals um, was just getting started, and there were some good doctors there. Mm -hmm. um, but 
they wanted to do something. That's the one thing is you get frustrated that nobody's right. doing anything. Right, and right. so they started a ride because mm -hmm. he was an athlete. They wanted, they knew they wanted to do a sporting event. Mm -hmm. And that's when it started was in 2005. And that first year they raised $35,000. Wow, what a, what a wonderful year. And, mm -hmm. and they had trouble <laughs> finding some place to spend the money. Really? They, they could not find, they, they searched quite a bit trying to find a good sarcoma project. And mm -hmm. they finally found one uh, with the uh, um, Sarcoma uh, Foundation of America. Right. A um, couple years later, they found out that the Holden Cancer Center was actually doing sarcoma research, mm -hmm. and so they shifted uh, their fundraising efforts toward the Holden Cancer Society, right. Cancer and Center, um, in 2007. So y'all doing this for for the Holden Cancer Society? For Holden it's Cancer, yeah. Yes. So the money stays locally, uh -huh. and we have a really good relationship with the doctor who Amen. really yeah. kind of um, heads up the research. He's my personal doctor. So of wow. course, I'm a big fan. <laughs> but um, he has done amazing things. Uh, Iowa, University of Iowa uh -huh. is now recognized as one of the national cancer centers, mm -hmm. because partly because of all the patients he's brought mm -hmm. here. And that's a huge part because of this funding that we're Amen. able to give. And we need to get the word out and more mm -hmm. and more talk about this more. Now, now tell me something. Now, this is happening on the, where is this, pro, where is this ride happening and, and how can anybody get involved with this? What, what, is it, the, the, ride, 20, the ride, Courage the ride, ride. is going to be this Saturday, August 25th. Uh -huh. um, we leave from uh, Iowa Mennonite School, which is uh, 15 miles southwest of uh, Iowa City. Mm -hmm. I can give you the address, but I, I don't know that that would mean We're, a whole lot. You can mm -hmm. find out more at www.courageride.org. Mm -hmm. um, but the ride, uh, there's three routes, uh, 27 miles, 42 miles, and Ooh. 94, if mm. you're really up for a challenge. Oh, that's a challenge. Yeah. The first one's a challenge right there. When you said yeah. the first one, I mean, okay, now that's, <laughs> well, I'm not, I, th I used to be athlete, but my, I'm not athlete anymore. That, that's a, y'all to do that type of ride is amazing to me. It's pretty amazing. countryside. It, it would be 27 miles well spent because oh, it's right. very beautiful countryside. Mm -hmm. um, registration is from 6 to 10. Mm -hmm. um, if you register, registered riders um, get themselves treated to a Belgian waffle, dad's Belgian waffles. We've mm. got lunch. We're really known for our rest stops. They've got okay. Kelowna Cheese Factory and okay, Kelowna yeah. Ice Cream Bars. And yeah. we've got, there's a rest stop in Williamsburg that'll have homemade uh, sweet rolls, but uh, live music at all the places. The whole nine um, yards then for yeah. you. Know. Mm -hmm. so it's, a fun, it's a fun event and you, you do not go hungry. Oh that's man, sure. oh man. See, that's, that's something I like. That's something I like right yeah. there. N yep, not going hungry. <laughs> so yeah, so um, um, Dad, we got two minutes. Um, so, so we want to get okay. Now it's going to start the 25th mm -hmm. of, of, of August. August, mm -hmm. and we're at nine o'clock in the morning. What six o'clock? It starts. Um, registration is from six to ten. Six to ten. If you're going to do the 90 mile ride, you might want to leave like at 7 a.m. Okay. Um, otherwise, the two other rides, anywhere between eight and ten, eight okay. and eleven, is fine. You know, it's an right. all day event. There'll be music at the Iowa Mennonite Center or High School there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, um, also the website is courage, www.courageride.org. .org, okay. And if you can go online and you can uh, donate money to the uh, Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Iowa Hospitals. Right. It's, um, it's, a good, it's a good program, yeah. a good thing, mm -hmm. you know, with cancer and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, we're definitely going to try to get the word out what y'all are doing. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. We've got to keep talking about this more and more uh, to get more of these. Let, let everybody know. It's not, Just, you know, cancer is cancer. You know, this is a rare cancer, but it needs to be talked about. And you are a beautiful person surviving. I encourage you and applaud you what you're doing. And God bless you, whatnot, stuff like that. And man, if you, what you're doing, is, uh, thank you for being on the show. You're and, and sharing, you sharing your, us on. Your, your deal and whatnot, and stuff like that. I, and I hope that you, I wish you a thousand more blessings in your life, both of y'all. So you. thank, thank y'all for coming on the show and stuff like that. I appreciate that. You know, we want to, I want to let everybody know that, you know, we should, this is a beautiful cancer. It's a, it's a thing that definitely, devastating thing for everybody. So we want to encourage that, let everybody know, to do something positive or whatnot, and get out there and, and get involved with cancer. Because we can beat that. This young lady, she, she, she beat it. It's a beautiful thing, she beat it, and, and I'm, we really encourage everybody to do the same thing. So uh, with that, I want y'all to just keep um, doing what y'all are doing, and um, we'll see y'all next time. 
Join Bicyclists of Iowa City for the 2012 Courage Ride on Saturday, August 25th. This annual bike ride travels through the scenic rolling hills of the Amish countryside near Kelowna over old stagecoach routes. It is dedicated to improving the lives of people living with cancer. The money raised through this event goes towards funding local cancer research at Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. Rides range from 20 to 100 miles with challenging or relaxed routes. Non-riders are welcome too, so be sure to bring your family and friends. Besides the ride, you can also enjoy delicious food like Dad's Belgian waffles for breakfast, a hearty lunch, and well-stocked rest stops, all free to registered riders. Listen to live music at Iowa Mennonite School and even at the rest stops. Also, participate in the silent auction for bikes and other fantastic items. It's sure to be a fun-filled day for the whole family. This year's event is sponsored by Hills Bank & Trust Company, Mark & Mary Ellen Stinsky, Geico, Buck Walter Motors, Jeff's Bike & Ski, and Bicyclists of Iowa City. Be a part of an event that will give back long after we are off of our bikes. For more information or to register or donate for this year's ride, visit CourageRide.org. I take people to Coralville, North Liberty. I go all over Iowa City. Pheasant Ridge, Broadway, Taylor Drive, Mosquito Flats. I don't care. Don't make no difference to me. I also like to make interesting television, like the piece you're watching right now. I learned how to do it at PATV. They offer workshops on camera operation, editing and final cut, and motion graphics. All my life needed was a sense of some place to go, and PATV is the place to be. TV studios. It's the Lyle Style Show. And now, the man with the most style. It's your host, Lyle Style. Hey, welcome back to our special Lyle Style Show, a second part. Uh, this is a treat for me because this, this man goes back way back and he still looks the same. He still look wonderful. Uh, his name is Dr. Nick Colangelo and he, he's part of the uh, gifted, gifted program at the University of Iowa. Man, thank you, thank you. A thousand thank you for coming on this show. It's really good to be with it, Lyle. Oh, it's good to see, see you. you again. Oh yeah. God, it's, yeah. you know, it brings back old memories, t look, talking to you and stuff and uh, I know we've been emailing back and I know you're uh -huh. busy, you know, going to other different places and stuff like that. And and, and the last time, like it had to be like '93 when I when you invited me on to talk to yep. some of your yep. kids. You, you came back about it was about 1993. You yeah. came to talk to some of the kids in our programs. You were an inspiration, and so well, this is a small way to say well, thank oh, you. Oh well, no, God, Ooh, it's good to be here. I, no, no, I don't have to pay you no like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but no, but but um, I want to talk about your program. Though. Okay. Now it, it's 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 growing. It was it was smaller back in '93. You started out. Well, you, no, you started in '88. You was telling me. Right. Right. We we program. became a center in 88. We're, we're part of the College of Education, mm -hmm. University of Iowa, and but the Bell and Blank Center focuses on kids of unusual ability in the academics, arts, mm -hmm. or leadership. So we identify kids who are gifted and talented because we know that in schools, a lot of times these talents are missed and these kids don't even know what, what they're capable of doing. And mm -hmm. so our work is to help identify kids from all backgrounds, you know, because what we've learned is when it comes to talent, it's an equal opportunity employer yes and we also work with teachers so that they can identify such kids and help do some things in school that are really appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when the Bell and Blank Center started in 1988, we served the state of Iowa. We were really pretty small. We right, had, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, uh, big dream, small budget. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. um, and then you came in 1993 to yeah. talk to, to some of our kids. You know, we're moving along. Well, since 1988, uh, you know, things have really grown at the mm -hmm. Bell and Blank Center. Mm -hmm. Now this year, Lyle, this is our 25th anniversary. Oh, you know, and 25 man. is usually a magic number. And years. Marriages, whatever, you know. So, yes. so it says we've been doing pretty well. Oh my you know? goodness, what and, a success rate. Uh, 
And so since that start in 88, you know, we've gone national. And the last few years, we have really become international. We, we get kids to come to the Bell and uh, Blank Center from all over the world. We have a program with China. We're about to start one with India. I'm fortunate I get to travel. Uh, oh, I'm wow. just coming back from Rio, Jerusalem. From Rio? Yeah, yeah. What you doing out there in Rio? Um, I was giving a presentation. You know, uh -huh. They had a conference on gifted education because the rest of the world is really seeing that, you know, it's important to develop some of our top-notch kids. And mm -hmm. so they're coming around to saying, how can we improve our education so that more and more kids, uh, you know, can get these opportunities. Also, a lot of countries, you know, Brazil is one of them saying, you know, we, mm -hmm. we have a lot of poverty kids. How do we make sure that we don't miss some of the kids of, you know, of high promise? And so there's just a lot of energy around the world. And they're looking to the Bell and Blank Center, wow. you know, for some guidance. And so uh, I'm going to Germany just to in, in another 10 days. So mm -hmm. we've clearly become uh, a much bigger center, but, but the heart and soul of it is still find the kids mm -hmm. who can use some extra help. Right. Find the teachers who are really willing to dedicate themselves to helping kids develop talent. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's really what uh, it boils down to. Right. Now, now do you still focus with, with, with the state of Iowa? Uh, uh, we still, I mean, Iowa's our home. Yes. Okay. And you know what home is all about. So yes, we yes. still take care of Iowa. We have a lot of programs that are only for Iowa kids. But it, when we started, it was only Iowa. Yeah, I said, it was. Now we'll take kids from around the nation, and we take kids around the world. So I think we have a nice balance. You know, we've expanded, mm -hmm. but we've never forgotten our roots. Amen. You know, with Iowa, That's you know. what I'm talking yeah. about right there. Yeah. And now you have kids coming from, mm -hmm. from all over the country. They're from, from the West Coast mm -hmm. and East Coast, mm -hmm. yeah. South, yeah. North. So our, our programs are open. If you qualify, you know, uh, and one of the things we try to do is uh, – separate talent from ability to pay, you know, because okay. our programs do have a fee to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And what our motto has been is that if you have the ability, we are not going to make economics a barrier. And so we, we provide financial aid, scholarships, mm -hmm. and, and so <laughs> yep. forth. And is it, is it a two-week program or is it all summer program? It, it's all different kinds. We have one program uh, that is six weeks. We have some that are one week. We have some that are two weeks. But it, you know, summer is the time that we have access to the kids. Right. So that's yep. That's the way it works. It's a little um, more challenging, you know, with kids from other countries because their summer vacation isn't necessarily the same as ours, so we right. have to do a few things. Yeah, I know. How did you get those kids yeah. over to? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. You know, we all have to learn about, you know, uh, what, what their needs are and how we can make it happen. Uh, we also do Saturday classes. Oh, uh, okay. and, that's, and so since those are only for one day, it's basically kids from... Mm -hmm. Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area, oh, but we, oh, come in. You know, we have yeah, yeah, we have uh, classes that kids can do a half day or a full day. So we're trying to make things possible for as many kids as possible. But mm -hmm. summer is when we really have you know we have about a thousand kids that come Ooh, through our program. Now it has grown because it wasn't yeah. a thousand kids when I no, went when I went no. to talk to some of it was dang, a thousand kids. Now now do you introduce them to a lot of the people in the university with staff uh, sports? Uh, athletes. Uh, you, know, you know, part of it is uh, a lot of these kids get to see what university is all about yeah. long before they actually get to university. And that, mm. that gives you a leg up, you know. Mm -hmm. You're not yeah. intimidated. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what a residence hall is all about. Mm -hmm. You survive college food for a summer, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're, you're halfway there. Yeah, so, exactly. And yeah. they get to meet faculty, they get to see facilities, you uh -huh. know, Kinnick. And, and then all of a sudden you feel like, you know, if I go to the University of Iowa, I'm already halfway home. Yes. You know, people know me, yeah, I know yeah. where things are. And that means a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I realize some of the kids are not going to come to the University of Iowa, but wherever they go, I think the experience we give them is going to make them more likely to succeed. You know, they're not going to be as nervous about mm -hmm. getting away from home. So it, it, it's a great thing because I think parents realize mm -hmm. that, you know, if our sons and daughters get a chance like this, they, they're going to just be more confident. You know, our, our, our entire thing is helping kids succeed in life. Amen. Yeah. Now, now, have you had any, any people come back from the program and, and years, years later, have you seen uh, them doing things in yeah. their lives? Yeah. Or yeah. So, you know, we're, 
We're now at the point where some of the kids yeah. you know, through our pro are really well into their adult years, mm -hmm. you know, and they're doing well. You know, some of them are already um, pretty well-known faculty members at various oh, universities. Wow. You know, they're they're working in business. Mm -hmm. They're lawyers there, and I think as the years go on, you know, uh, th these are the kinds of kids that I think some of them are going to become senators, governors. Know. You know, the next generation. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 really. But, you know, and, and it's it's always wonderful to ever get an email from one of them and says, you know, remember me? I was uh, in the program uh, in 1991. Yeah. Well, now I'm head of this firm. Oh. And, you know, as you can well imagine, nothing makes you feel better than, than hearing that. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Because I know you're talking about your son, and he's uh, in Vermont. Right. He's telling me that right. in doing um, administration. He's a town administrator. Right. Yeah, right. Wow, what, wow, what a beautiful thing. And he, and he was an athlete, too, at one time. Yeah. Yep. So, and so, you know, it's, it's just great. I mean, not only my own son, it's great to see these kids just flourish, you know, mm -hmm. develop. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you feel like you had a small hand in, in helping that along. and that, It makes you feel you good know, on the I inside. Mean, at heart, you're yeah. an educator, Lyle. You oh, know what that's man, all about. You yeah, want to see? I do. I, I want to see kids. Yeah. I want, cause, you know, I'm an older guy. And, and, and you know what? I want to say thank you back then for allowing me to talk to your kids back in 93. Uh, I mean, it, it was an honor for me to invite me on there. So uh, I appreciate well, that, too. I, I wanted them to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want kids to meet someone who, who inspires, who says, hey, you can do this. Look at me. You know, you were doing things out of your own creative head. And, uh, you know, mm. uh, and I still remember that. Yeah, you know, wow, yeah. Was, uh, God. Ooh, that makes me feel really young. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, but, but, but your program is such an inspiration. It's such Thanks. a beautiful thing that you're doing. And, and when I heard how much it expanded and, and, which, and, and how y'all you, created and whatnot, now you got meetings, you booked up to the hill, you know, so it was right. hard. So this was the only time that you could had a chance to come on and talk to me, which I'm honored that you came on and do this, uh, Thank you. Uh, what you're doing. So, um, but and as, as you're going to Germany, you're saying, yeah. and, the, and the program starts every summer, right? Start at right. the beginning of the summer. But, and then we go, we go right at the beginning of summer. Usually we start right in June, you know, uh -huh. when, when kids are out of school, and then we go right to the end of July. And we have programs also for teachers. We have several hundred teachers oh, that wow. come for summer teachers? training. Well, you know, we give them information about uh, characteristics of, you know, gifted mm -hmm. students. How are, what can you do to the curriculum, modify it so mm -hmm. that it's more appropriate, you know, mm -hmm. huh? Because uh, they make the big difference. That's right. Every, every right. time we do a good job with one teacher, I think we've probably made a difference for a lot of kids that we'll never see. Amen. So, you know, when we started, we were just focused on teachers. We, we sort of grew into, oh, into wow. student programs. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. So, but, so we've continued on, on both of that. And, and uh, sometime you're going to have to come see our fairly new building. Yeah, you know, you, man, I'm there, yeah, man. You yeah. know I want to come down. It's the Blank Honor Center. And, you know, we just feel fortunate that we have a building that's mm -hmm. welcoming to kids and parents and that mm -hmm. we can do the kinds of programs we'd like to do. So uh, it's, um, it's been good. You know, universities really supported us. And wow, uh, yeah. we're... We're moving along. I know you really. Good. Yes, yes, and I want to wish y'all a, 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 a thousand years of, of prospering. You know, with your program, it's a, it's a that program should model the whole country. This should be in every college all over the country. Program that you're doing because you're doing a wonderful job. You yes. are a motivation. You are really. Um, be a hallmark for people. You encourage people what you're doing. So I want to thank you from my heart for uh, what you're doing. And want you to keep on doing what you're doing and whatnot. We I will. really do. So I appreciate that. And um, I definitely want to come come out there on right. these days and, and check out your program. Do it. You know, maybe I could be a student too. By all means. <laughs> get my, well, I got a little talent though. But uh, uh, so, but yeah, Nick, Nick, thank you for coming you on the show, being involved with it. I appreciate that, I, man. Keep in contact with me, and, you know, and, and what you're doing and whatnot. And you keep up what you're doing. Yes, right? I will. God, All right. Oh man, God Take bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Well, I hope you viewers learned a little bit about the show today. This is a special live show with two special people: uh, uh, Martin with, with, with the cancer program, Nick with the uh, uh, gifted program. Two beautiful things that people do on positive things. That's what my show is about: positive things, positive people. So with that, I want y'all to keep on watching the Lifestyle Show. And I want to say goodbye to my beautiful friend that watches the show every day. Love, love you. Love you. And with that, 
keep styling program keep styling pro profile I can't talk I'll see you later bye <laughs> I'm trying to hurry up because 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 my time wasn't going out so I'm trying to hurry with the time and whatnot stuff like that so uh, we did, okay we're going this show is going to be a okay. show right here. I'm gonna get your tape of it.